Hi and welcome back to my booktube channel. My name is Sam and today I'm going to be telling you all the books that I read in May. Um, now, I did a May hopefuls video and if you didn't watch that yet, go check that out to see what books I was going to read. I, I, stuck to, I stuck to it a little bit. I read quite a few of the books on that in that video but I didn't read all of them so I did kind of fail that. I don't know if that's how May, those hopeful videos work. I don't know if you fail if you don't read them or whether it's just a thing. Anyway, I don't know. I'm new to this. Um, but yeah, I did read some of the books off that list and I didn't read some others. Um, some for good reason, some for others. Um, but yeah, this month I read... how many books did I read this month? I read one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight books this month. Uh, varying from big to small to audiobook to physical. Oh no, I read nine because I don't have one of the physical books. But yeah, the first book that I read in May was the book that I vlogged about on my uh, cruise ship journey, which was so cool. Check out those three videos if you haven't already. We went to Barcelona in Spain, we went to France, we went to Italy. There's a video for all three countries, so go check that out. Um, they are the videos just before this one, before the... I can't talk. <laughs> I can't talk. Um, so thank you for subscribing if you have to a channel where the person can't talk. But the first book I read is The Stranded by Sarah Daniels, which is about a cruise ship that sets sails from Europe, which has been destroyed by war, and it makes its way to America where they do not let it in. And this kind of America is split into what's left of the United States and what is now called the Federated States. Um, I can't remember what they were arguing about. I think the main argument was they didn't want to let the people on this cruise ship come into the country and that kind of divided the country. Um, and this bordered on one of the states that was part now part of the Federated States. So this cruise ship was stuck on the shoreline for 40 years. So a whole new community, a whole new way of living has be uh, become upon this boat. Um, and we follow the two main characters who are trying in different ways to escape the boat. One wants to join as a medic to the Federated States who accept trainee medics, the best of the best, to come on shore, um, the rest being left on the boat. Uh, and the other is part of a rebellion to try and overthrow the government uh, power on the boat and figure out a way to dock the boat onto land and get everyone off that way. So two very different approaches and the, their worlds collide in a very <laughs> coincidental ways and yeah it was a lot of fun i rated it four stars very generously i could easily see it being a three star but i think just the fact that i read it on a cruise and it's about a cruise <laughs> just boosted it up and i just it took me out and i had lots of fun reading it and it was just fun it was a fun way and i highly recommend it four stars um i I said what I wanted to say in the previous videos, so check them out if you want to hear more on this book and the process of me reading it. The next book I did actually uh, finish on the cruise as well, I just didn't put it in those videos, um, but that was Magnus Chase, Nine from the Nine Worlds, which is a short story collection for the Rick Ryald and Magnus Chase trilogy. Um, in this one we kind of follow nine different stories from the Nine Worlds, <laughs> it's in the title, um, I don't know why I explained it like that, but we follow like different people in each of those worlds and little stories and we got a little bit more of Alex Fierro who I love um yeah it was a really cute story a bunch of stories and yeah I don't really have much to say about this one there were some more memorable stories such as the one with the shop and the trousers um where all the money there's like weird creatures like where are these trousers they make money I need money and Alex Fierro is just there and he's like, perfect um, that one was the most memorable, and then the other ones is kind of like one with Odin, which is like the beginning one, which I didn't really find that entertaining, I didn't really like Odin that much. Um, but yeah, it was good, it was a good short story collection, and I feel like it added to the board. Uh, overall, Magnus Chase isn't my favourite Rick Riordan series, it's probably, well, I haven't finished Kane Chronicles yet, but as of yet, from Percy, Heroes of Olympus, Trials of Apollo, and then Magnus Chase, Magnus Chase comes last for me. I enjoyed it, it just... I didn't enjoy it as much as the other ones. <laughs> I much prefer the Greek god side of things rather than the Norse god. Yeah. The next book I got was one off of the cruise. I didn't read it on the cruise, but I got it on like a book swap on the cruise. Um, and that is Bird Box by Josh Malaman. Malaman. I don't know why I said land. Um, you've probably heard of this before. As you can see, it's a Netflix film now. Um, so it's basically about this 
uh, apocalyptic uh, t uh, time where creatures have entered Earth or what could just be natural causes. We don't know. It never says. Um, but these creatures enter Earth and basically if you look at them, they make you want to run alive yourself. And it's kind of this giant epidemic and it kind of ruins society and ends the world. And we follow the survivors as they kind of figure out this new world without their main element of sight. Um, and the fear that comes with that they don't want to leave the house they don't want to look at anything but yeah I feel like we get in the book a lot more information on the char characters themselves and the relationships between these characters and we also get a bit more time with Mallory as she kind of comes to terms with the world and we see a different uh ending for her sister which isn't a spoiler because it happens right at the start of the film anyway um and it still looks really in the trailer <laughs> um but yeah we see a different ending for her sister and it's much more impactful I feel so yeah, it was very good in terms of being different from the adaptation, which was great. It was very different from the adaptation and it was interesting to see the variations between the two. And what did I rate this one? I think I rated it four stars. So yeah, I just don't remember ratings. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I recommend Bird Box if you're interested in a horror film. Now, I did read an audiobook. I wonder if there's a picture in here. I don't think there is. But I read Josh Mallerman's Mal Mal other book, A House at the Bottom of the Lake, um, which I audio booked so I don't have the physical copy of it. But yeah, it was it was okay. It was a novella and it's just about two people that were on a date and they found a house at the bottom of the lake and they went and explored the house uh, and then weird things were happening in the house and then the house vanished. And yeah, it was basically that kind of plot line and it was kind of boring not gonna lie <laughs> i wasn't that invested and i don't really recommend it it's there was nothing to it. it it's marketed as a horror but it probably shouldn't be a horror because there was nothing horror-y about the story itself <laughs> there was like a few moments where it was like there's an eye in the water there was something else there and it's never really expanded upon or like kind of resolved in an interesting satisfying way so yeah I don't really recommend the novella but I do recommend the book. Next book that I read was kind of just random I was like you know what I fancy reading this I'm gonna I'm gonna read it uh, and boost up my reading I guess um but that was Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman uh, I have read this before but if you have not it's about Nick and Charlie <laughs> who are the main characters of Hot Stopper which is up there so you can't see it let's see if I can grab an edition of Hot Stopper um this is Hot Stopper um, you may notice this is a, a real person cover. There is a Netflix adaptation, which I recommend. It's really good. It's Pride Month. Go watch Heartstopper. Um, but yeah, that's Nick. That's Charlie. And this is a book about them after the Heartstopper series and kind of where they are at this point in time. And it's sad. It's emotional. It makes you angry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's a really cute little short story about that. And yeah, I loved it the second time around. I do still get annoyed about why the things in this book happen um but I'm glad it ends up how it ends up so yeah <laughs> that's like a Charlie I have the signed edition oh I love that these stickers for the signed editions on Alice Ozen books are like special they have like the little stars and the drawings and it just makes it all unique and then there's her signature I like that one um and then the next book I read was one off of my May hopefuls I did uh, the Stranded was also on my May Hopefuls, but the next one that was on my May Hopefuls that I actually got round to was Catherine Ryan's uh, The Audacity, uh, which matches my shirt. Um, and this is a memoir from Catherine Ryan, who is a comedian, and she kind of talks about her life up until now, her struggles having children, her struggles finding a man um, that doesn't treat her like shit, um, and just kind of her family and becoming a comedian and moving from Canada to England uh, which is such a huge difference for her and it was very interesting I really enjoyed it and it definitely gave me some more insights into her life and uh, a lot of interesting background because obviously I've watched her stand up on YouTube and she kind of mentioned some of that and what was going on before that and behind the scenes and it really makes you think like wow uh, she can so easily hide how what what is affecting her badly and all the shit that was happening to her she can really hide it and perform and do a good performance of the crowd which is really incredible um for a performer to be able to do and i found that very cool uh, i also like her blunt kind of style of honesty in this book she acknowledged some of the stuff she did in the past 
may not be acceptable in that nowadays standards in terms of some of the jokes and stuff i'm glad she acknowledged that in her book um yeah it's just interesting to learn more about Catherine ryan and yeah i recommend this book i think i gave it four stars a lot of four stars in this video um yeah it was very interesting there were some points where i was like this is kind of a boring story and also i didn't like the order of the stories because often normally a memoir is like chronological you start from the childhood you get to the modern day and then they thank you for reading it and following them into the future but this one kind of went wishy-washy there was like some stories from uh specifically this is how i noticed it she has a daughter called violet and you'd get up to a point where her daughter was a teenager and they kind of talk about that um well not a teenager but older um and then suddenly in the next chapter it's like before violet was born this happened it's like why was this not earlier i felt like the publishers must have just done that to try and get the interesting chapters throughout the book rather than all at one point um but yeah that's one thing that annoyed me it wasn't chronological all the time but overall i enjoyed it and i do recommend it if you like Catherine ryan and want to know more about it. next one off the may hopefuls that i did indeed finally get to um, was Frontier by Grace Curtis, which I powered through three stars. I wasn't a massive fan of this book. It felt very much like a video game. Um, and in terms of we were following the side quests of this video game. So Frontier is a, about a survivor of a crash who is now trying to find a way to communicate to the surviving ship where her girlfriend is uh, to try and like reunite, tell her that she's fine, she's alive. And we follow that journey, but we don't follow it from the main character. We follow it from other characters that the main character in interacts with. So we, every single chapter feels like a video game's side quest um, where you are constantly introduced to new characters that you can never really formally attach to because they only stick around for one chapter. Um, and you kind of see how they interact with the main character. And it just kept that distance from the main character. I could never really attach myself or get invested in the main character because we never really saw them. They were never really a presence in the story. They were always just someone else. And the people we were viewing from were the characters that we got invested in because we heard their stories, but the main character was kind of distant from that, which really took me away. And I really think it didn't work for this kind of sentimental story. I saw that. And, uh, good reason someone mentioned this. It doesn't work for the sentimental story of a love story, of reunion, when you can't get invested in either side of that party. You can't get invested in the main character because you hardly know them and you can't get invested in the love interest because obviously the people we're viewing from don't know the love interest. And we only get a chapter with the two together once towards the end. And it's just, I couldn't connect with the relationship. I couldn't see it and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, I couldn't like visually see them together because we never saw them together in the first place. So if that makes sense, it just, it was hard to connect because we never got the main POV, which was my main issue with this book. And I'm going on about it. But yeah, overall three stars. I didn't like that aspect. I didn't like the ending. It was kind of corny and Disney movie. Um, and yeah, I just didn't really like any of the characters. So I gave it three stars to be generous because I do think it was a good Western inspired novel, which is what it was going for. So it did well in that aspect. And the world building was interesting. I would have liked to know a bit more about how the world actually ended um, because they traveling back to a destroyed earth. Um, I'd like to have known a bit more about how it was destroyed, but the world building that was there was pretty good. Um, so yeah, three stars, not a massive fan read it if you want to read it i'm not gonna recommend it but it was an okay read i guess overall but i was just very annoyed that we could never get attached to the main character but yeah there was a it was there was a book the last book i read in may was a buddy read with my friend summer on instagram at summers uh, at sums paperback dreams uh go check her out she's really amazing um but we kind of have a taylor jenkins a re read obsession um and we have this little ta <laughs> taylor jenkins read book club with may read uh who couldn't join us on this one unfortunately so it was just me and summer but we have this little tgr tgr i can't say the acronym uh tjr obsession and we kind of read the books together and this time uh, me and Summer read One True Loves, and this one follows Emma, who is uh, in love with Jesse, but then one day Jesse disappears on a helicopter crash, um, and he kind of disappears for two years, so she kind of re-falls in love with this guy called Sam, 
not me, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's, I'm not in a Taylor Jenkins boot book. Um, but she falls in love with this guy called Sam, who's really sweet. Um, and then one day, the phone rings and Jesse is on the other side. He is alive. He's back. And now Emma finds herself in a situation where she has a husband, Jesse, who has suddenly returned, and a fiancé, Sam. So it's a very awkward, very interesting plot. I highly recommend checking it out. But overall, my thoughts were I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Definitely up to Taylor Jenkins Reid's level. Definitely better than Daisy Jones and Six, which I did not like. That's the only Taylor Jenkins Reid book I just don't like uh, because I really didn't like the script writing style. Um, um, but yeah, it was definitely up to her standard of the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Malibu Rising. Um, carries her to his back. It's definitely up to their standards. A little bit blown. It's probably third on the list just for Daisy Jones. But yeah, I definitely really enjoyed this one. The concept was amazing and really intriguing. Um, and there was definitely some choice and turns that I didn't see coming. Um, I loved the car how morally grey some of the characters were and how interesting it was to kind of dissect them with Summer. And yeah, I highly recommend this one. Some of my gripes with this one were not really gripes, but just observations were it wasn't as realistic in terms of like with her other novels which are to be fair more recent novels so you can kind of see the development from this book to those ones but with the re more recent novels like Seven Husbands of Ed and Hugo the characters feel real we know as an audience so much about these characters we are told their entire backstories their personalities we can see how their past reflects on their futures and how their personalities come across and clash with other characters whereas in this one it felt very much like there was three main characters two of which were detailed and interesting and one that was just kind of there and yeah I just feel like the characters specifically some kind of the outer characters like Olive the friend Marie the sister and her two kids who were deaf um they could have been developed so much more and integrated into the plot. It felt like they showed up every now and then, but we never really got a sense of who they were and how they affected Emma and Emma's decisions in this novel. I really wish we'd have just seen more of them and then it would have been probably a five star read if that element had been improved and the side characters were more developed and more realistic and more fleshed out and invested as more invested in them. It probably would have been five stars. But yeah, that was my main issue. I just wanted more from the, make, uh, from the characters and even the main characters. Like Emma was good, but she kind of felt rushed. We kind of went from the childhood years to the adult years super fast. Um, and she took way too long to kind of see some of the red flags and the relationships, uh, which annoyed me. But she got there eventually and her final decision you'll have to read to find out who she ends up with, if she ends up with anyone at all. So yeah, highly recommend Taylor Jenkins Reid in general and One True Loves is one of her good ones so yeah <laughs> I say that like they're or there's the bad ones the only bad one is Daisy Jones and the Six and that is my personal opinion people love that book I don't but yeah this is this is good <laughs> unlike Daisy Jones and the Six um but yeah that is the books that I read in May not many I mean it's it's quite a lot in terms of books but for me, I just kind of feel like I could have done better. I've definitely done worse this year. I think there was a month where I read like two books uh, or four, actually, I think. I could have done better. But these are the books that I read this month. And you know what? I'm happy. I'm proud. I got some of the books on the May Hopefuls video read. And yeah, hopefully I can do better next time. Hopefully I'll do better in June. But we'll see. Um, These are my books that I read. I don't know why I'm holding them that way. There we go. <laughs> these are the books I read. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, comment, tell me tell me what books you read in May. I'd really love to hear about them. Did you read any of these ones or have you read any of them? What were your thoughts? You agree, disagree with me? Um, make sure to subscribe if you want to stick around and see more from me. Uh, press the little bell button if you want to be notified when I post, which is very sporadically. I just post when I post. I'm sorry. But yeah, like, comment and subscribe. Um, my next few videos are going to be some very interesting ones. We're going back to the vlogs. I'm sorry. We're going back to some vlogs. So yeah, stick around for that. It's going to be an adventure and I'll see you in that video. So bye.